pilot's watches or aviation watches are one of my favorite styles of watches out there. I think they're just such a cool style of watch. They have just this great sense of adventure and sophistication. They're really versatile as well. You can kind of dress them up or dress them down. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at five of the best pilot's watches you can find for under $350. Or we would if one of the five's parent companies didn't apparently go out of business. So take a look at the watches we're gonna be checking out and then we'll go through the list. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan and I love to collect affordable watches. And like I said, one of my favorite styles of watches, maybe even my favorite style of watch, is the aviation watch or the pilot's watch. Each month here on the channel, I take a look at the best watches in a given category and make my choices with your help. So the watches that we're gonna be looking at here today are not simply ones that I picked, but they're ones that I asked you guys what you thought the best watches under $350 were. So big thanks to everybody who made their suggestions last month. It was a lot of help in putting this list together. I also wanna thank Joma Shop who helped me out by providing two of the watches that we're gonna be looking at today. So they sent these watches over to me for free, which is just a huge help in enabling me to get these watches in front of you guys. Joma Shop is an online store that I have personally used in the past. They ship internationally, which is great for me here in Japan. And I think they offer some of the best values out there when you're looking for affordable watches. Now, with that said, let's jump into our list for today. And the first one that we're gonna take a look at is probably one of the most recommended watches that comes up almost on any list that I do. And it's one that I haven't been able to take a look at until now, and that's the Seiko SNA 411 Flightmaster. So thank you guys for pushing me into finally getting this one here on the channel. After having played around with it for a couple of weeks, I can definitely see the appeal. Let's check it out. Some pilot's watches are designed to give excellent legibility at a glance, and others are designed to give pilots every possible tool they could need on their wrist. And the Seiko SNA 411 Flightmaster is definitely in the latter category. It's a tool watch in the truest sense in that it probably has more tools on it than it has watch on it. The quartz movement packs in a chronograph feature, a date, and alarm, but perhaps the defining characteristic of this watch is the pilot's computer slide rule bezel. Now, when you combine these features along with the multiple scales that are printed onto the dial and bezel of this watch, you get a pretty astounding breadth of features available to you. Using the slide roll bezel, you can perform multiplication, division, square roots. You can calculate time, speed, and distance. For example, if you're flying at 200 miles per hour and you have 100 miles to go, you can calculate how long it will take you to get there. You can do conversions between miles and kilometers, liters and gallons. That same bezel also features a scale with compass markings, so you can also use it to determine which direction north is for navigation. On the dial, they've also managed to print a tachometer scale for use with the chronograph, which will allow you to calculate average speed over a known distance. You also get an alarm on the six o'clock subdial, which has a very quartz-like electronic beep when it goes off. Given that this watch is made by Seiko, the loom is not half bad. And impressively, they've also included 200 meters of water resistance on this watch with a screw down crown and screw down chronograph pushers. Now, obviously all of these features were probably a lot more useful before smartphones became so ubiquitous, but like so many watches, its appeal really is to kind of bring you back to the time when these sorts of tools were necessary for pilots giving you, the layperson, kind of a tangible connection to the past and to this sort of romantic era of aviation history. To me, this watch has kind of a neo-vintage 1980s, 90s feel to it. It looks like the sort of thing you would find on the wrist of a fighter pilot from that era. But I think what makes this watch so cool is that it is definitely not a toy. It's not like Seiko's just trying to evoke the image of these fighter pilots from the 80s. This is a fully functional piece of equipment. It has a robust build quality, very sharp, crisp printing, a super smooth bi-directional rotating bezel, and a highly accurate quartz movement. And while it looks like a really large watch, it's actually not with only a 41 millimeter case and a very narrow 44 millimeter lug to lug, meaning you can wear it on a pretty wide range of wrist sizes. Now complicating that a little bit is the kind of awkward end links on the bracelet that protrude past the lugs, even though they are female end links. The bracelet does feature solid links all the way around, including on the end links. However, the clasp only features two micro adjusts and you're getting a Hardlex crystal, which is probably gonna pick up some scratches eventually. 
Finally, the watch does take some hits to legibility with the massive amount of information printed onto the dial. And with the heavy doming on the Hardlex crystal, you do get quite a bit of reflections coming off of it. Still, this watch is an absolute classic from Seiko, and it's still available for a really affordable price. It seems like Seiko has been discontinuing so many of their older models, so it's great to see this one still readily available. And even still in 2022, I think it's one of the best pilot's watches you can pick up in this sub $300 price range. So next we're gonna go in a completely different direction and take a look at a very simple, very clean, very classic German Flieger watch. The Flieger style pilot's watch is one of the most influential designs in the entire watch industry. Initially designed for the German Air Force pilots back in World War II, they were renowned for their high legibility and their purpose-built nature for pilots in that era. And the manufacturers of those original German Flieger watches are immensely important brands in the industry, brands like IWC and Stova. However, true German Fliegers from these brands typically run $1,000 and way up past that. But there is one manufacturer who was also one of the original German Flieger manufacturers that produces affordable watches, and that is Loco. They're a brand that I've featured a number of times here on the channel. I love pretty much every watch from theirs that I've seen. And yeah, for under $350, you can get a German-made Flieger watch from one of those original manufacturers. Let's take a look at it. To squeeze under our $350 limit for this video, we have to go down to Loco's basic quartz offerings. And you can pick up the Genf.2.D 40mm quartz watch for $320 direct from Loco. This watch retains a lot of the classic Flieger stylings. It's highly legible and not overly complex. While the watch itself is very simple, Laco has complemented this by really nailing in all the details with some absolutely beautiful finishing and some of the highest quality manufacturing that you're gonna find in this price range. The brushing on the case is sharp and crisp with alternating directions that really give a pleasing look to the eye. The detailed onion style crown is both beautiful and period accurate. The printed dial features very crisp numbers and indexes, and along with the minute and second hand, everything is fully loomed. I've looked at a couple of different Locos, and one thing that I'm also consistently impressed with is their handsets. They're very cleanly cut, extremely elegant, and just have a great air of sophistication and, again, period accuracy behind them. The watch also features a sapphire crystal, 50 meters of water resistance, and it is made in Germany. Paired with the watch head is a handmade German leather watch strap, which interestingly comes in at only 18 millimeters wide. This is pretty uncommon for a 40 millimeter diameter watch. Much more often you're gonna see 20 millimeter straps. And I think that's an area that a lot of people are gonna have a bit of a problem with. But I think what this does visually is it allows the watch head to wear a little bit larger than it normally would and kind of give it the impression of being a larger watch. And given that the historical Flieger watches were commonly 45 millimeters and, and larger, probably what Laco is trying to do is to maintain those proportions so that when they shrink the watch down to 40 millimeters, you're also going to have a narrower band than usual. Finally, well, most people are probably going to be looking at a quartz movement as a bit of a disadvantage. It does come with some obvious upsides, most obviously with the increase to accuracy and convenience. However, Laco has also managed to slim the case down significantly for this quartz version, getting you all the way down to eight millimeters. This really helps the watch to wear very comfortably on the wrist and give you no problem at all as far as it getting caught on sleeves or cuffs or things like that. All in all, you are going to be, have to be paying a bit of a premium for the German manufacturing and for that heritage that Laco offers. But particularly for people who are interested in the history and heritage of pilots' watches, that's going to be a small price to pay. Now, next month, we're going to be taking a look at the best solar-powered watches that you can find for under $350. So drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think the best solar-powered watch under $350 is, and I'll take it into consideration for next month's list. Now, that Loco is an example of a Type A Flieger watch. Next, we're going to take a look at a Type B dial Flieger watch this time coming from Orient. So a Japanese brand that has really become known as probably the value king among watch brands out there. They make their own automatic movements in-house and they always put out an impressive level of value for the money. Next, we're gonna take a look at the Orient Flight, featuring an in-house Japanese automatic movement, a robust build quality, which includes a screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance. The Orient Flight just might be the best value automatic pilot's watch you can buy right now. This is a watch that's modeled after the Type B Flieger design, which features 12 hour markers on an inner ring and 60 minute markers on an outer ring. 
allowing for very rapid reading of the time. Watches of this style were originally on the large side, but Orient has kept things reasonable with a moderate 42 millimeter case diameter. The watch is also very slim at only 11 and millimeters tall, making this very wearable on the wrist. You can get the Orient Flight in a lot of different colorways and bracelet or strap options, but this one's probably the most traditional or vintage looking with its cream dial and kind of reddish hued leather strap. The dial markings are sharply printed with a glossy black paint, which contrasts nicely against the cream dial, giving excellent legibility. Likewise, the hands are also outlined in black and filled with loom. Orient has also opted to give small loomed indexes at the edge of the dial which doesn't look quite as cool as if you had loomed all of the numerals, but with this black on cream color combination, that really wouldn't have been feasible, and you get a pretty good amount of After Dark legibility this way. Inside, you get one of Orient's more modern movements, which does feature both hacking and hand winding. However, at this price, you are only getting a mineral crystal. The strap is a little bit stiff and kind of rubbery. It's something I don't really mind wearing, but I would probably wind up swapping it over to a nicer strap later on. One other thing that kind of comes off a little bit odd is the size of the handset. It looks a little bit undersized. I can excuse the shorter hour hand because that's part of the Type B Flieger layout. You want that hour hand to reach the edge of the inner ring, which it does. However, the minute hand seems too short. I, I would have liked to have seen that extended closer to the edge of the dial. But these minor points aside, the watch is still an amazing value and a really handsome looking watch. And these are things that Orient has been really consistent in delivering. So if you're in the market for an automatic classic Flieger style pilot's watch, but you're on a budget and you're looking for something from a reputable company, this is probably the best option you got. Now, before we go on to the next watch, quick reminder to check out my t-shirt store at justthewatch.com. I've got lots of cool designs, including this shirt here. And I recently added these cool lightweight zip hoodies. Additionally, I do occasionally sell watches. So some of the watches that you're gonna see on here, I don't always keep, and sometimes you can find them on the site including at least one of the watches from this video. So more reason to go check it out, justthewatch.com. Okay, so this next one is kind of my pick. This is from a brand that I really like myself personally, uh, and that is Jack Mason. They're kind of on the edge between like a traditional watchmaker and more of a fashion brand, but they have their headquarters in Texas in the United States. And I feel like they do just such a great job with the design of their pilot's watches. I feel like they do a great job of infusing their watches with this kind of American golden age of aviation style, think kind of the Howard Hughes era. And in recent years, they've kind of shifted, I think, from more of like a department store brand to an online direct-to-consumer brand, making for a very appealing proposition. Let's take a look. The Pursuit from Jack Mason is a stylish, well-built pilot's watch with some really fun aesthetics. The red, white, and blue counterbalance on the second hand and the embossed star logo on the crown both pay homage to Jack Mason's Texas roots. And while I was able to pick up this automatic version for under $350 on their site when I bought it, unfortunately it seems like their prices have jumped up quite significantly since then. You can still find the quartz option of this watch for $250. However, they're now listing the automatic version for $550, which is kind of an outrageous jump in prices. That said, Jack Mason does run a lot of sales. So if you're interested in getting a watch from them, I would recommend checking back around certain holidays and seeing if they are running a big sale where you can often pick up their watches at a significant discount. And if you can get these watches at a decent price, I think they are a really fun one to pick up. The Pursuit has two really strong things going for it, and the first is the design. This one kind of takes inspiration from the Type A Flieger design, but then changes it around a bit with bar indexes at 3, 6, and 9, and with a sleeker, kind of more triangular-shaped set of hands. Now, I picked up this navy blue dial version with sort of a tan color scheme on the indexes and markers, which unfortunately is no longer available from their site. Now, for the automatic version, the only one they have is a black PVD version. My set came on a bracelet, but also included an optional leather strap. And while the bracelet was okay, the strap is by far the better option. For a stock watch strap, this is a pretty amazing strap. It features Italian leather. It's just really high quality and is a great match to the watch. This is something that Jack Mason seems to have really nailed down. They really pair some very high quality straps with their watches. One caveat with the automatic version is that they're using a pretty basic Miyota 8215 movement. And while it's a very reliable automatic movement, it's an older one that does not feature hacking. 
which traditionally was a major feature of pilot's watches. And so while I really enjoy this watch, I wouldn't recommend paying the full $550 retail price for the automatic. I think $250 for the quartz version is not bad, but it's a little bit puzzling why they think they can get away with charging pretty much double by adding just a basic Miyoto automatic movement to the watch. If you're into affordable watch collecting and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I do lists like this every month and try and find the best affordable watches to review and show to you guys here on the channel. So for this last watch, I wanted to take a look at a brand from AliExpress because on AliExpress, you can find some of the best values imaginable. There's so many of these Chinese manufacturers that are just putting together watches that have an insane level of specifications and build quality for an incredibly low price. The trade-off is you gotta wait a long time in the shipping and your customer support is often not that great, but for a lot of people, that's a small price to pay for the level of value that you get. Now, not too long ago, I picked up an Escapement Time Flieger and I absolutely love it. I was really excited to show that watch to you guys today and I am gonna be showing it to you. However, it seems like between the time I bought the watch and was able to make the video, Escapement Time appears to have gone out of business. Their shop is sort of on indefinite hold right now, so there is a chance that they'll come back in the future. You can still find their watches on AliExpress, but the prices have shot through the roof. This Flieger that I got features a PT5000 movement, so this is like a Chinese version of the ETA 2824. It features a sapphire crystal, decent BGW9 loom, pretty great build quality, 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown, blued hands, and they just nailed the details on this thing. Um, I feel like this, this very much looks like a watch that could have come from Laco, except being manufactured in Germany. It's manufactured in China for like a third of the price. When I bought it, you could get it for around $160. And one thing that really impressed me about it was that I actually got good customer support from Escape in Time as well. When I received my watch after about a month or so, I had a problem with the movement and I thought, oh, there, there went my $160. I'm never gonna get any support from it. But I actually contacted Escape in Time through their chat on AliExpress. They responded instantly. The guy on their chat was incredibly knowledgeable. He was able to zero on and exactly what the problem with the movement was. And he said, you know what, send it back to me. And I did, I sent it back to him. I thought again, maybe I'll never get my watch back. It took some time, but about two months later, he sent the watch back completely fixed, working in great condition. Uh, so I was amazed. I was like, you know, that was one of the main drawbacks I've had with AliExpress brands in the past is you don't get great after sales su support. So I was getting ready to purchase some more watches for them and now their shop's on hold. So if they come back to life, um, definitely make sure you check them out. But in the meantime, you might wanna check out San Martin on AliExpress. They also have a great reputation. A lot of you guys recommended their Flieger watches. And one other one I'll throw in there since we kind of got this opening is uh, Full Gear. So they sent in one of their automatic watches that features tritium on the dial and hands which is something that they kind of specialize in. I included it as part of my microbrand showcase, I think back in January, and it was made probably my favorite watch from the group. It's just a really cool, well-built, if a little bit large aviation style watch. And Tritium is just such a great feature, I think, especially for a pilot's watch. It fits the theme perfectly and really adds a lot of functionality. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. Again, don't forget to drop me a comment. Let me know what you think the best solar powered watch you can get for under $350 is so that I can take that in consideration for next month's list. That will wrap it up for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.